Yeah, I think they. Hey, can, Jen, can I hand you this? I don't know what this is. <laughs> well. Well, good morning, everyone. The majority leader has signaled that he is going to unveil uh, tomorrow morning the most uh, significant piece of domestic legislation in memory. And his goal after introducing that measure in the morning presumably would be to force a vote on it some uh, 36 hours uh, after that. What we know for sure at the moment We've seen the uh, Pelosi bill and we've seen the Reid bill, but none of my constituents, none of his constituents, none of Senator McCain's constituents, none of you, in fact, no one who couldn't be collected in a phone booth has seen, if I can find it, oh, here it is, have seen the missing bill. Uh, which is a mystery to virtually everyone, apparently up to and including the assistant Democratic leader of the Senate. So this missing uh, bill will be sprung, presumably, we will see, uh, sometime in the, in the morning, and the 36 hours will begin to, to run. As we have pointed out uh, repeatedly, this massive piece of legislation that seeks to restructure one-sixth of our economy is being written behind closed doors without input from anyone in an effort to jam it past the, not only the Senate but the American people before Christmas. An artificial deadline. Every American will be affected by this missing bill. Every single American will be affected by this and no one will have had an opportunity to read it and to understand it. With that, let me uh, turn to uh, Senator McCain. Well, I want to thank Senator McConnell and our leadership and all of our Republican members who have uh, spoken out so strongly and so steadfastly and with such solidarity. Let me just mention uh, how far we've come here. Look, look how far we've come from October a year ago October 9, 2008, when the President of the United States said, on the issue of health reform, I will have Republicans and Democrats sit down together with C-SPAN cameras in the room so the American people will know who's on the side of the pharmaceutical companies and who's on the side of the American people. So how did, where we ended up? We end up in a bizarre situation where even the number two uh, a senior, senior Democrat, uh, Senator Durbin, in a colloquy with me, says he doesn't know what's in the bill either. You remember the commitment that uh, that legislation would be online for 72 hours before we would take up the legislation? Whatever happened to that? Boy, you talk about change. You talk about change. It, it, it isn't change you can believe in. It's change that's astonishing. We all know that promises are made in, uh, in political campaigns, but this is a complete reversal. There is no change. This is business as usual. Tomorrow, there's going to be a snowstorm, and we'll be coming in in uh, RVs, and everything will be paralyzed, as our nation's capital always is when there's a, a snowstorm. <laughs> but, the fa and the, but the fact is that there's a firestorm out there in America. That firestorm says, stop this, stop this. We want to know. We want to know what's in this legislation. We want to know what, 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 uh, about what's going to happen to one-seventh of our gross national product. And that firestorm is about to overwhelm the Democrats in the United States Senate. So again, we want to sit down. We want to do what the president pledged that he would do. We want to sit down and negotiate. We want the C-SPAN cameras in the room. We want 
to do something which is bipartisan, which is good for America. We know that the health care costs are out of control. We know that we have to address the issue, that Medicare is going broke in five years. But the fact is, this is in contravention and contradiction to how the United States has acted. Every single major reform bill that's been passed in the history of this country has been bipartisan. There's no bipartisanship here. There's no negotiations. There's no conversation. And no one knows what's in this bill, but one senator, one senator knows what's in this bill. And, in, and included in that, of course, we have no cost estimate from the CBO, and apparently it's all going to be sprung on us tomorrow morning in the middle of a snowstorm. That's not what America wants. Well, let, let me say, uh, if you examine my record, I showed outrage over the pork and earmarking that was on the defense appropriations bill all those years, and that spending was out of control, and that the American people would reject it, and it harmed our ability to carry out our conflict. So when you say we, don't include me in that group. Well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me also address the issue of uh, the majority leader is in charge of the schedule. I mean, he's the reason we're doing the defense bill in the middle of the health care bill. Um, I think we've made it rather clear we're not going to expedite consideration of the health care bill. Now the defense bill will pass. It just won't pass as quickly as he would like for it to pass. But he's in charge of the schedule. He's got the debt ceiling hanging out there. He's got the defense bill to pass. And he's trying to jam the American people on this mysterious bill that, that no one has seen. Uh, before Christmas. Well, every every s senator makes a decision about whether they want to come to a vote, and it's not uncommon for senators to miss votes. It happens from time to time. But we're all sworn in to do our duty, and we make our own individual decisions about whether, you know, we um, come to a vote. As I said, every individual senator makes a decision on that. Could I, could I mention one yeah. other aspect of this debate that's really unfortunate? I've been around here for more than 20 years. Yesterday, on the floor of the Senate, the senator from Connecticut was finishing up his remarks and as we always do, ever, ever since I've been here, as we always do, he said, I'd like an extra minute to finish my remarks. And it was objected to by the newest member of the United States Senate in a, in a most brusque way. That's how the comedy in this body has deteriorated. Let's, uh, we got to stop. We got to stop this kind of behavior. I've never seen anything like that. And I hope that I don't see it again. It is our intention not to pass this bill easily. I think we made it pretty clear. I, I have <clears throat> had a, a practice of not uh, telegraphing <laughs> procedural moves that may be available to us, and I'm going to continue that practice. But I don't think anybody in the room's missed it. We don't think this bill ought to pass, and we're not in a hurry to, to, to uh, complete it. But could I also add, if we haven't seen it, don't you think we should have time to at least examine it? I mean, uh, so it, it, I don't think it would be outrageous to ask for a bill to be read that we haven't seen that affects one-seventh of our gross national product. That is my favorite movie. Look, there are bills and there are bills. This is a major restructuring of one-sixth of our economy, a manufactured deadline which Senator Snow has pointed out for weeks. 
needed to be dealt in a dealt with in a more deliberate and bipartisan way but we're in this position because of their desire to back this up to christmas uh, to not only roll the opponents of the bill but to roll and deceive the american people that's why we're in this position i don't think so no i don't think so no i mean we haven't we haven't had a bill like this i mean we haven't had a bill like this since you and i've been here of this magnitude i've never seen a bill that that was no one knew the details of until the time for beginning the vote to to pass it and that that's just not I've been here for many reforms, welfare reform, social security reform, campaign finance reform. I, I've never seen anything like this, and I don't recall, I haven't talked to anybody who, does, who has seen anything like this. We, we, everybody knew what the bill was. I mean, there was d debate, of course, and, but everybody, everybody knew what the bill was. <laughs> Oh my God! I mean, to say we're going to have uh, everybody insured—that's one thing. Is anybody against that? How do you do it? I mean, the, the, if there's ever a, a, a example of the devil is in the details, we need to know how we're going to do this. And so, uh, I think it's even more vital when you're talking about these massive changes that uh, this legislation entails. If that's big, or or this big. Look, I, I, I don't think you can make I, your job is to ask tough questions. I don't think that's a tough question. I don't think you can argue with a straight face that an issue of this magnitude, that an issue of this magnitude should be dealt with this way. We will have ended up spending two weeks amending this bill. We spent four weeks amending a farm bill last session, seven weeks within the last decade on a on an uh, energy bill, seven or eight weeks on to creating the Department of Homeland Security. This is an outrage. You all have been around here a while. You know this is not the, the customary way of dealing with major bills. And this bill is much bigger, as Senator McCain has said, and I have said, much bigger than any of the things that I mentioned. <laughs> it's beyond fixing. You know, it's not fixable. It needs to be stopped, and we need to start over, as Senator Snow has repeatedly reminded us, and as Senator McCain mentioned again, to do these major bills in a bipartisan way with, with, where there's buy-in from both sides. This was an effort from the very beginning to unify the Democrats, pick off a Republican or two, do it in secret, and jam the American people. Because because we want to do what the president said we would do October of 2008. He said he'll sit down together, Republicans and Democrats across the table, and negotiate out so that we can fix what is a failing financially health care system and preserve the highest quality health care in the world. That's, that's what we're asking for. We're not saying do nothing. We're saying let's sit down. We have good ideas. Let's sit down and negotiate together. Could I? Yeah, I'm not going to ask a hypothetical like that. I, I think there's a good chance that they will not be able to get their, their members to lock arms and walk off the cliff in obvious defiance of the American people. Every single survey, every one, shows either fairly significant opposition to this bill or overwhelming opposition to this bill. They are basically thumbing their nose at the American people who are sc virtually screaming at us, please do not pass this bill. And unfortunately, for not the last time in the next few days, we'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.